Samuel Butler, self-portrait. Like many young English men in the mid-19th century, Samuel Butler came to New Zealand to make his fortune. Butler also came to New Zealand to escape family expectations. The son and grandson of clergymen, Butler was expected to enter the church in due course. After studying at Cambridge, he lived and worked in a London parish, preparing to be ordained. During this time, however, he began to question some of the principles of Christianity and appealed to his father to support him to return to Cambridge to study towards becoming a professional artist. Butler's refusal to be ordained met with his family's disapproval. It was decided that the best thing would be to send him off to New Zealand, a conveniently distant destination. In a letter home, Butler bluntly stated that the only reason people emigrated to New Zealand was to make money. After his arrival in early 1860, he set about doing just that. By October, after months of crisscrossing the Canterbury backcountry on horseback, Butler had claimed 55,000 acres of land and established the sheep farm he named Mesopotamia. When Butler returned to England four years later, it was with a healthy profit from his farming activities that made him independent from his family. Settling in Cambridge, he was able to pursue his artistic career, studying at art schools and exhibiting at the Royal Academy. This self-portrait, painted in 1873, is very much in the disciplined, realist style favoured by the Academy. However, it is for his writing, rather than his painting, that Butler is best remembered. In 1872, the year before this self-portrait was made, Butler published his most famous work, the satirical novel Erewhon. Erewhon tells the tale of a traveller in a faraway land who encounters an upside-down society where sickness is punishable and crime and illness. The church is mocked and machines are banned for fear they will one day supersede humans. The descriptions of the land of Erewhon strongly recall the Canterbury high country Butler lived in and explored. As he writes in the book's opening chapter, I am there now as I write. I fancy that I can see the downs, the huts, the plain and the riverbed, that torrent pathway of desolation with its distant roar of waters. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, so lonely and so solemn, with the sad grey clouds above, and no sound save a lost lamb bleating upon the mountainside, as though its little heart were breaking.